Welcome to Quick Classroom Mysteries. You must be the new junior detectives. Let us see how well you can put your new found skills to the test. You'll be working closely with our best detectives, Inspector Felix and Detective Atler. Because you're new detectives, we'll need your help in the future to help solve our cases. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of any future cases. Now to the story. Inspector Felix stepped up to the massive front door of the mansion. What a horrible way to start a Monday morning. From where he stood, he could hear Mrs. Callahan's wailing. Taking a deep breath, he went inside to hear her outrageous story. Mrs. Callahan had rung the station, claiming someone had stolen her irreplaceable three million dollar diamond ring. Inspector Felix was on the fence. Was this the real theft or a false insurance claim? Tell me what happened, Inspector Felix asked. I was reading in the front room when I heard the alarm for the safe in the office sound. I ran to the office and found the door open, said Mrs. Callahan. No one but you and your husband know the combination, asked Inspector Felix. That's right. Not even the slaves, I mean servants, know the code, explained Mrs. Callahan. Could one of the servants have found out the code, asked Inspector Felix. I doubt it. We moved the variables around to different safes at random times. We had only just moved them to the office safe on Friday night. We changed the codes on Fridays when there are no staff here. Mrs. Callahan explained. Were any other safes opened? Inspector Felix asked. Mrs. Callahan replied. No, just this one. Whoever came obviously knew what they were looking for. Doubts continued to grow in Inspector Felix's mind. If they had the code, how come the alarm was triggered? asked Inspector Felix. There is a little button here on the inside. Mrs. Callahan took Inspector Felix over to the open safe. See here? This is the fingerprint scanner. If we do not scan our fingerprint, it triggers the alarm. Inspector Felix leaned in and looked inside the safe. There was money, watches, passports, and a gun. None of the other valuable items had been taken. This was highly suspicious. Closing the safe and placing the Van Gogh painting back over the top, Inspector Felix asked, What happened next? After seeing the safe open, I ran quickly to the window, where I saw a black car speeding down the driveway, Mrs. Cahan said motioning towards the large window overlooking the driveway. Have you seen this car before? Any identifying details? Inspector Felix asked cynically. Yes, yes, explained Mrs. Callahan. I got the car's number plate. You got the number plate? Inspector Felix asked, raising one eyebrow. From this window, he asked, indicating to the window Mrs. Callahan had previously pointed at. Inspector Felix moved towards the window. Looking out, his doubt grew even stronger. Standing still, he could barely read the license plate of the police car parked in the driveway. Not just because of the distance, but because of the many jacarina flowers that blocked his view. This likelihood of her being able to read the number plate of a car speeding away seemed doubtful. Here it is. Mrs. Cowhand waved a piece of paper in the inspector's face. Taking it, he looked over the three digits and three numbers mostly scrawled on the paper. Handing it to an officer, he instructed her to pull out an oil alerts bulletin. Mrs. Callahan, has there been anyone different in the house recently? Inspector Felix asked. Oh, yes. We had a large charity gala here on the weekend. We had many workers and caterers through the house, Mrs. Callahan explained. Could any of them have seen you open the safe? Inspector Felix motioned to the now hidden safe. Definitely not, Mrs. Callahan explained in an offended manner. Can you think of anyone who might have a reason to steal your diamond ring? Inspector Felix asked, already packing away his notebook. Everyone, everyone is jealous of me, Mrs. Callahan replied indignantly. Inspector Felix replied with a hmph and left the house. Back at the station, Inspector Felix was working on what he deemed a more important case when a detective in Casey Adler knocked on his door. We have found the car that matches the number plate Mrs. Callahan gave us. It belongs to a Mr. Barrett Drover of 14 Conquest Street. Some uniformed officers are piled across the road watching the house. Nothing suspicious seems to be happening. Do you want to head over and check it out with us? She asked Inspector Felix. Inspector Felix stood up, grabbed his notebook and said, Why not? Don't really have anything else better to do. His front door, as Inspector Felix and Detective Adler arrived, Inspector Felix looked up at a man who was more than ten centimetres taller than himself, a very large, imposing figure. Good morning, Mr. Drover, Inspector Felix called out. 
Morning, officers, Mr. Driver replied. Call me Barrett. What can I do for you this morning? Is this your vehicle? Detective Adler asked, pointing towards the black vehicle parked on the driveway. Yes, it is, said Mr. Driver. Inspector Flex gave the car a once-over. There was nothing unique about the vehicle. It was a standard black car. Has your car been parked here all morning? Inspector Flex asked. Yes. What is this about? Barrett answered, visibly getting irritated. Mr. Driver, do you know Mrs. Callahan? Inspector Flex continued his questioning, despite Mr. Driver clearly getting annoyed. Yes, I know the crotchety old bag, or should I say I know of her. Never had the displeasure of meeting her, Mr. Driver replied curtly. Old oh, bag. Seems a strong sentiment for someone you have never met, Inspector Flex noted. Look, my wife is a caterer and did a job out there this weekend. The old bag tried to underpay her. Typical, the rich get richer by ripping everyone else off. Is that all? I have to get to work. Barrett moved towards the vehicle. Did your wife take your car to a catering job at Mrs. Callahan's? Inspector Flex asked, plucking a jacaranda flower from the space between the windscreen and the bonnet. No, she took her catering van, Barrett said, indicated towards the van past the driveway beside his black car. Now, if you don't mind, again, Inspector Flex blocked Barrett's attempt to get into his vehicle. So your car has been parked here all morning. Could your wife have taken it out? Inspector Flex asked Mr. Drover. Yes, all morning. No, I don't think my wife has taken it out. As far as I know, she has been here all morning too. And anyway, she doesn't drive my car. It is a work vehicle. Family are not allowed to drive it. I have to get to work. Please let me get into my car. Mr. Drover's annoyance was very clear now. Inspector Flex stepped aside and let Barrett open his door. Getting in, Barrett paused for a moment before reaching down and pushing the seat further back. Shutting the door and putting down his window, he said, If you want to talk to my wife, she is inside. Barrett put his window back up and roared out the driveway. Looking at Detective Adler, Inspector Flex shrugged and indicated towards the house. Mrs. Drover answered the door very quickly. She had clearly been standing by the window watching the inspector's conversation with her husband. Mrs. Drover, how are you this morning? Inspector Felix asked. Good, thank you, Inspector. Yourself? Mrs. Drover answered. As good as one can be when they are investigating a theft for a spoilt, rotten old lady, stated Inspector Felix. Oh, really? Who? inquired Mrs. Drover. Mrs. Callahan, do you know her? Detective Bella asked. Yes, I know the old dragon. I catered a charity event at a house this weekend. Mrs. Drover motioned for them to sit. Would you like a drink? Inspector Flix nodded and prepared his next question. As he did, he noticed Mrs. Drover struggling to get the glasses from the top shelf. Would you like a hand? Inspector Flix asked. Oh, yes, please. We keep the nice glasses up there, away from the children. But when my husband is not home, I struggle to reach them. Maybe I should invest in a stepladder, Mrs. Drover chuckled. Your husband tells us you had a disagreement with Mrs. Callahan at the catering job, Detective Adler asked. Yes, she did not pay the full amount she owed us, claiming I had bumped up the price on the night. I was able to pull up our email agreement on my phone and show her. She was really annoyed too, but once she realised I was not backing down, she went and got the money for me. Not that she didn't have it, explained Mrs. Drover. What do you mean? Inspector Flex asked Mrs. Drover. Well, when she opened the safe behind the painting, I think it was a Van Gogh. I saw that she had stacks of money in there, and here she was trying not to pay me a few hundred. Probably pocket change for her, Mrs. Drover said bitterly. So you were in the office with her on the weekend? Inspector Flex asked Mrs. Drover. Yes, and I am glad someone stole that old selfish dragon's ring. It might teach her a lesson in how to treat others. Mrs. Drover said smugly. Turning to Detective Atler, Inspector Flix said, We need to go back to the station and get an arrest warrant. I know who committed this crime. There, you have the story. Do you know who committed the crime? Pause now and have a discussion with your class. Inspector Flix will be getting an arrest warrant for Mrs. Drover. Here are the clues that tell us. 
Mr. Driver's car had been seen fleeing the scene of the crime. Also, Mr. Driver's car had jacaranda flowers on the bonnet, showing that it had indeed been near jacarandas recently. Mr. Driver was a tall man and his wife was short. When Mr. Driver got into his car, he had to push his seat back, implying that he was not the most recent person to drive the car. Mrs. Driver knew details about the safe and its contents and would have known exactly where to go. And lastly, she mentioned that she was glad the ring had been stolen, even though neither Inspector Felix or Detective Adler had mentioned the ring, a piece of information only the real thief would have known. You have been excellent detectives. We will need your help in the future to solve cases. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future cases.